Hey there, this is Matt Bingo. You already know who I am. I don't need to introduce myself. You're watching the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Hmm, didn't realize I had that power. <laughs> Roll it. Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Happy to have you here with us. I'm your host, Jake Devenbaugh, and today's always our co-hosts, Chris Bixby and Matt Bingo. How you guys doing? We're good, Jake. Good. Hello, everybody. How are you doing, Jake? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. I'm with us, as always. Interesting episode. Matt, what do you have for today? Today's guest, we are extremely honored to have the extraordinary voice behind one of the most notorious villains in gaming history, with the voice that has sent shivers down gamers' spines throughout uh, throughout the years and has brought joy and some rage to countless players. He's masterfully done the voice of Bowser for more than a decade. Uh, we'll be getting into the world of voice acting. And uh, here he is, the amazingly talented Kenny James. Kenny, welcome. How you doing? Howdy diddly. Yeah, it's almost almost two decades. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Crazy. Yeah. Really? Wow. I've been Bowser pretty close to 19 years. Wow. So. wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says, all right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, so yeah. we so we know who you are, but in your own words, would you care to introduce yourself a little bit? Uh my name is Kenny and I'm a voiceaholic. Now you're supposed to go, hi Kenny. Hi. <laughs> hi, Kenny. <laughs> I know. Um yeah, sure. man. Um <laughs> I'm just uh I'm just doing my thing, man. Uh I've uh I've been voice acting I pretty much started when I got the Bowser gig. Um, I didn't even actually start acting until I got about that, that time period. I didn't start acting until I was 40. Um, and that includes stage acting and voice acting all at the same time. Uh, I just, I don't know. I was just doing my regular day job stuff and then decided, Hey, you know what? I should do community theater and I should do voice acting there we are <laughs> now, awesome. i'll be i'll be 60 this year wow oh my gosh really i know wow. my, my mother just turned 60 that's See? crazy something <laughs> crazy yeah. yeah 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 it's uh it's been it's been pretty weird i mean i spent probably half of this time I was still working my regular day job I was Bowser but nobody knew and I didn't think anybody really cared <laughs> you know until I started checking into uh conventions you know and then I was like hey wait I could do that too and then I don't need my day job anymore so I'm not rich by any means because I don't get royalties on video games but uh, I make enough to uh, not have to go to work anymore. My wife hates that. <laughs> <laughs> he has a full time job, so yeah. Hmm. yeah. I work, uh, you know, twelve weekends a year or something. So, yeah. <laughs> well, so that, was... and, um, that and going to uh, Crunchyroll doing anime. So, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 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 what, so, what, so, what was your background like, and how did you grow up? Oh man, uh, I grew up in the middle of nowhere in deep east Texas, and and I mean deep east Texas, southeast Texas, uh, is not desert like West Texas. A lot of people think that all of Texas is dry and weird. It's not. Half of it's very forested. Um. And um, I don't know, it was about, I live in the Dallas area now, uh, and that's five hours from here. 
You know, I mean, that's how big this place is. Uh, it takes me, if I go visit my mom and my sister, it takes me five hours to get there. Um, but uh, yeah, I grew up in a, going to school in a town from fourth grade on until I graduated, a uh, little town called Broadus. And the population at that time was, I think, 180, um, not 180,000. <laughs> you know, 180. And uh, I decided in my senior year that I wanted out. So I joined the Navy uh, about seven months before I graduated. I still graduated, but I was on delayed entry program. And so 12 days after I graduated high school, I was on a plane for the first time ever on my way to San Diego to go to boot camp. So, uh, so that's where I, that's where I started from. Um, the Navy moved me to Washington state. I lived in Washington state for, I think it was 38 years. And then I relocated back to Texas, but in North Texas in DFW, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth, um, so that I could be close to Funimation which is now Crunchyroll. So, and that was about three years ago, three, three and a half, something like that. I'm back in Texas. Eh. I don't know what else. What what else? (laughs) So now, so now kind of uh, going back to the beginnings before taking up acting, you uh, were a lead singer in several bands. Can you share any of your experiences during those days? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, Well, that's one of the reasons why, When I started acting, I was all like, I ain't scared of no ghost, you know, Uh, so to speak, because I had been on stage in front of people for so long that I was like, you know what, I should do a play or I should be in a musical because I can sing. And um, so it just sort of went from there. And I was very, (laughs) I, I had been in recording studios, you know, for music. Um, so very bullheadedly, you know, when I nailed the audition for Bowser, uh, first time I went into the studio, I was all like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I was <laughs> terrified. You know, I, it was a nightmare just cause I was all like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. This is the real deal. You know, and this isn't me and my band, you know, going into a studio and recording some stuff. It was it was the real thing, you know, and I was, but I pretended, you know, like I knew what I was doing. I did the same thing with anime. You know, I came over here and I was all like, like, yeah, yeah, I'm a voice actor. I can do this. I had no (laughs) idea what I was doing, but luckily I took to it, you know, like a fish as they say. So, um, actually just had a session yesterday. So, you know, I love it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we've interviewed a lot of other uh, voice actors over the years, too, who kind of share similar uh, stories. Like we interviewed uh, Debbie Derryberry, who's the voice of uh, Jimmy Neutron. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen Debbie in a long time. She's so so sweet. She's she's a super nice lady. I really like her, but I have not bumped into her on the convention circuit for quite some time. So hopefully I will again, because I have a picture with her, you know, in all her tininess. Oh. She's about, she's about, <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even think she's five feet tall you know, she's she's little she's short but she's super nice and pops in and out of the jimmy neutron thing all the time so oh yeah yeah, yeah. 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 hopefully so now you mentioned kind of like uh a little bit of the process of getting bowser boat what was it what was the process of landing that role like well I don't know the you know I can go on for a while I can <laughs> you'll you'll find out about this you know as we go on that uh you ask me a question and sometimes it'll take 10 minutes to get an answer which you know which is great for content so yeah um <laughs> no I get it um so the story goes I had built this website back in about 2000 2001 when cable internet was just starting to happen 
You know, you didn't have to go on. You got mail, you know, that kind of. Thing. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was getting beyond that. And I got my cable hook up and I was all like, wow, I can download a song on Napster in five minutes. Oh, God. It would, even though sometimes it would still take 10 minutes to download a single song now you know i mean i'm on gig fiber you download a song from somewhere and it takes like four seconds yeah <laughs> it's insane anyway i digress which i often do uh so i had built this little website with a napster copy that i had of coffee cup nine uh, it was a website building utility where you still had to do quite a bit of HTML all by your, you know, you had to figure it out. Um, so anyway, the buttons worked. Um, I had gone to a voiceover class at the University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, it was mostly for commercial voiceover, and I just nailed that class. Um, the instructor was like, he would have us come up and bring it, you bring in a cassette tape so he could record you. And, uh, he passed out copy and you're like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, say, okay, I got this. And I had two different ideas. Brings me up to record me. Does the first one. And he goes, I don't have any notes. Oh, wow. Oh, like nailed it. And then I went, <laughs> then I went I, big headedly. I went, I actually had a second way in my head that I could do this. And he goes, really? And I go, oh yeah, it's completely different. And it was more like, um, kind of, it was, it kind of twisted the copy more towards uh, a New York kind of feel and but the character in the commercial sounded almost like Woody Allen. Oh, wow, okay. Kind of, kind of low key, but you know, with the accent and you know all this stuff. And and I go through this commercial again. And he's just all like, uh, and I was like, uh, -huh, cool. Well, hmm. continuing the story instead of just patting myself on the back more, uh, I got him to produce a demo for me. And back in those days, demos weren't split up like they are now, where you have a commercial demo that's 60 seconds. You know, you have a character demo that's 60 seconds. Right. You know, you make an animation demo that's 60 seconds. This was three and a half minutes of all kinds of stuff just smushed like a peanut butter sandwich that somebody sat on. It was, it was so smushed together. Um, but it worked. And... I was working my job selling propane and propane accessories. Uh, I used to work for Suburban Propane. I was a service tech. So I did actually used to sell propane and propane accessories. Um, but uh, we were, myself and my service manager, we were working at a house on Bainbridge Island, Washington. And I was talking about how I had gotten a couple of these little voiceover gigs from some guy in Canada and he was paying me eight or nine bucks a piece for these things for uh, doing answering machine stuff. And uh, I was, I was like, all right, that's cool. I'm a, that makes me a professional because I'm being paid. So then I could, I could label myself. I know as a professional voice actor, you know, and um uh, well, this this customer overhears me and she says, oh, you do voiceover work? And I go, I'm trying. And she goes, well, I'm a part time producer at Bad Animals over in Seattle. And I had heard of Bad Animals because uh, Ann and Nancy Wilson from Heart originally built that studio. And then, oh, wow. and then, yeah, then eventually sold it. And uh, it wasn't used for music as much anymore as it was for television music and Foley and things like that. And just so happens though, Nintendo uses that studio. So uh, she sent my demo over to them because it was available. That was the thing, boys and girls, that before anybody even asks, you know, 
I want to get into voice acting. What should I do? And I'm one of the th one of the things you got to do is you got to have demos on hand because the Absolutely. second mm -hmm. first thing mm -hmm. she asked was, "Oh, you do voiceover?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm trying." She goes, "Do you have a demo?" Yes, I do. You know, and I had my little website. And so I wrote down the address, you know, and gave it to her and she listened to it, sent it over to Wendy at Bad Animals. And Wendy started sending me auditions. And I auditioned for some other video games, Sly Cooper 3, stuff like that. Uh, didn't get anything, you know, so I thought, well, not quite good enough yet. Um, but then the Bowser audition came along when they recast. And I thought, well, it's an audition, so I'll record it. Now, the way it went, and I told you these stories can go on for a while. The way it went was they sent me, uh, Scott Burns was Bowser before me. He was he was Bowser in Super Mario Sunshine. Mm. And they sent me the lines from Sunshine, and they sent me Scott's tracks, raw tracks outtakes and all you know just raw and so i assumed that they wanted a voice match so i did my best scott burns you know mario how dare you disrupt my family vacation you know and all that stuff and and uh nailed it again <laughs> <laughs> and uh I, I don't know i i said it you know and you do the set it and forget it because if you're gonna do if you're gonna do auditions for anything don't agonize over it do right. your audition best you can send it forget about it because i did i was all like yeah sure i'm gonna be you know a mario character you know about two weeks later i got an email that said you got the job and i was all like wait what <laughs> <laughs> but you know, all that all that meant though was that I had to take a vacation day so that I could go and record. You know, uh, I still had to work my job. You know, they only pay you for the studio time. You don't get royalties. So, anywho, that's how that pretty much launched. Was that I was in the right place at the right time and had a demo in hand. So as I said, um, my advice to people, I get this at, at panels a lot, uh, table side a lot, you know, I want to be a voice actor. And I'm like, well, you, you want to be a voice actor, first be an actor. And so I profess theater constantly. It scares the hell out of people, and it should. But I'm telling you that if you can't stand in front of an audience and act a part, then you're going to have trouble being in a booth also, because it's even, I think it's more pressure. I'm pointing this way, you know, because I have a whisper room. Uh, it's a, it's only a three by, well, it's a four by four whisper room that I use for auditions and stuff like that. But uh, it's, it's stressful being in a booth. You're by yourself but there's glass and you're looking out and like when I record for Nintendo, there's at least an engineer and four other Nintendo people in the room through the glass and they're all looking at you, you know, and sometimes I've recorded and even had people from Nintendo Japan watching via the internet while I'm recording, they're watching me live. Uh, I did that. Uh, that, see, that brings up another thing I just remembered. Um, I was recording. I'm trying to remember if it was 3D World or if it was Odyssey. I don't remember which, but uh, there was a laptop sitting on a little table next to my microphone and my script stand. Um, that was when we still had paper scripts. The Now it's mostly on iPads and you just scroll. But um, I looked over at the thing, and there's nothing on the screen, but it's obviously on. And I go, what's the what's the deal with the laptop? And they go, click. Uh, that's Japan. And I went, wait, what? <laughs> so I started goofing. You know, I would be all, 
discipline, something that they wanted me to do. And then I would look at the laptop. I would go, eh? Eh? <laughs> apparently, yeah, apparently they got a big kick out of it. So, you know, yeah. I had to play mm. up to them. You know, I was all like, these are the big boxes. Yeah. Because, yeah. You know, Nintendo of America records us. But then Nintendo Japan has to approve everything because I'm global Bowser, except for the movie. And I'm sure we were wound up talking about that. But um, as far as the games go, I'm global Bowser. There's no Japanese Bowser. There's just me. <laughs> Definitely. So yep. long story short, <laughs> <laughs> but I did, I did, I did, yeah. <laughs> I did, I did, yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious, I'm curious, were, were you a fan of video games growing up prior to working for the Mario franchise? And I'll tell you what, uh, like I said, uh, I think before we actually started recording, I'm almost 60. And I'll be 60 in July. So I'm a month away from 60. And when Pong came out, you know, uh, things like that, uh, I I thought this is the end all be all. You know, I was like, this is the future. Look at look at this. You know, you can plug this thing into your TV and play. You know, I was like, wow. Until I saw um well when i was a kid you go to the bowling alley or something um for gaming there was pinball machines and pool tables and bowling i go to a bowling alley one time and there's a crowd gathered around this thing and they had it cranked sound wise it was space invaders and i got through there where i could see it and stuff and i was all like oh my god you know this was amazing you know oh so, yeah i've i've been attached to games for you know since my middle teens i guess maybe actually pong was probably before that so um but then i've always followed along you know the the first nintendo entertainment system uh, released 1985, and my first wife got me that for Christmas. That's how old I am. Wow. Uh, yeah, I was already married. I was in the Navy uh, at the time, and uh, and she got that for me for Christmas. It had that Rob the Robot thing, that whole game system. It was terrible. Um. I, I grew to hate that thing and just put it away. I just wish I would have kept it all because now it would be worth hundreds of dollars. Hundreds. You don't find those robot things anymore for that game. Um, you know, it had the gun for duck hunt and all that stuff. And then this whole robot thing that was, a, you had to play a game with it. It was terrible. It ate D batteries for breakfast, brunch, lunch, dinner, uh, uh, wait i skipped 11 z's uh i mean it ate batteries like you wouldn't believe uh it was awful but anyway i still have a an xbox 360 it's in a box uh with the camera and all that jazz and i have a ps4 a ps4 pro a ps5 an xbox s i never did go with the the x the 10 whatever they want to call it um because i'm really more of a, a sony guy than a microsoft guy hmm. uh, i've got psvr psvr2 uh so i have a, a sim rig for racing with triple screens and a, oh wow nice and a ah, really nice. Ripping computer nice. That I built you know during covid uh yeah, I built all that stuff, and I don't use it as much as I should. My wife's always going like, how come you don't ever use that stuff? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I got tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> what it is, you know, what it is, I got tired of racing against jerks. Uh, uh, yeah, that'll, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. 
you're trying to fight your way up, right, to where you can get yeah. to races where you have uh, a better uh, strength of field. Because the higher the strength of field, the more likely drivers are to behave themselves and race ethically, you know, or whatever. Not dive bombing and just intentionally wrecking you and stuff like that. But it's really hard to get to that point, you know. But I, I do. I love ARCA races. Um, uh, I like racing all almost all things NASCAR. Uh, I love the Mazda MX-5. It's fun. I liked it a lot better before they changed it to uh, strictly uh, sequential shift, you know, where you have paddle shifters. Mm -hmm. um, you used to be able to, when I first signed up for iRacing, you could drive the MX-5 with a five-speed manual. And that's the way I grew up, jamming gears, man. <laughs> Clutch. <laughs> Nowadays, people are like, what's well, a clutch, you know, but anywho, so yes, yes, I, I'm, I'm a gaming kind of guy. Lately, my wife and I have been spending a lot of time in uh, Hogwarts Legacy, so. Oh, wow. Mm. Uh, that's awesome. cool. It kicks ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really, it's a really good game. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes. So, do you remember the first Mario game you voiced Bowser in? Yeah, it was Super Mario Strikers on the GameCube, the soccer game. Oh, yeah. I remember yes. that, yeah. Yes. Right towards the tail end of the GameCube. Actually, might have been one of the last, at least, Mario franchise games that was on the GameCube. Because, as I recall, my next recording session was for... Uh, Mario Kart Wii and Super Mario Galaxy, and we did them both in the same set. Yes. I remember those games a lot. Yes, so. me too. I Galaxy, still have my copies. Galaxy was a great game. Love yes. Galaxy. Yes. I, I remember. Never, I never played I remember, Galaxy 2. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny. I remember my, 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 uh, my twin brother i know some of you guys know him drew yeah. i remember he, he played like super mario galaxy games <laughs> it's crazy but yeah, galaxy galaxy was good um uh, mario kart Wii was really good um yes yes very i used to play that quite a bit with my brother-in-law you know i mean he would be at his house and i'd be at my house and you know we're <laughs> racing and stuff but um <laughs> there was a there's another little story about mario kart we um they used one of my ad libs in the game hmm. and i didn't know it until i was playing it one time after it released and i'm driving along and you know how in mario kart we you win the game or or the race and whatever character you're playing sort of you know the the car is coasting and they're celebrating right yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh -huh. well, they were like they told me just give us a whole bunch of uh celebratory bowser stuff and i was just going <laughs> all this stuff right i started running out of ideas i started running out of juice and i just offhandedly went <laughs> <laughs> i was playing it one time and i win this race and i'll be damned if he didn't go <laughs> <laughs> i went wait what i was so jazzed i mean i screamed you know i was like <laughs> i was like holy crap that was just an ad lib you know because i was just railing on all this stuff um, it was it was incredibly cool. So I I've got that going for me, which is nice. Now I'm curious: is there a certain method or warm up you use when doing Bowser, preparing for Bowser's voice for recordings? Uh, no. Um, if I if I think about it, and I don't think about stuff a lot. Um, I will start hydrating 
like the day before, you know, just, just keeping my water going. Um, and then, you know, the studio will be like, is there anything special you would like, Mr. James, you know? And I'd be all like, uh, a lot of water. And they're like, how about some throat coat? And I'd be like, okay, just in case. So, you know, I'll go into the booth and there's a little table with a lamp on it and stuff. And there's like seven bottles of water and a little plastic cup with throat coat lozenges in it, you know, and I'm like, all right, there we go. But, um, yeah, during a two hour session, I've been known to drink like six or seven bottles of water in oh. two hours. So I just keep... I can imagine, yeah, probably yeah. a lot of water is required to. Oh, yeah. Especially with, so. especially with a voice like Bowser's, you know? Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Just uh, one of the worst things I ever did was uh, Meowser for 3D World. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the cat, the cat power yeah. up. Yeah. Man, yeah. man. Uh, that tore me up. Uh, it was fun, but it was also really stressful because I knew it had to be approved. And uh, at one point, I was informed, but had not, you know, it's never been verified that. Uh, one at least one of the other characters their their cat version was had to be redone so i know i went in for a follow-up session and i said what about meowser and they said we're translating an email from japan right now probably has something to do with that and i was like yay and uh about 10 minutes later somebody comes in and went no they they're good they love all that we can move on it's like, oh, yeah, because I had no idea what I could do different. Uh, I had put so much into it because I turned the page on the script and it said Meowser in quotation marks. And I was all like, that's hilarious, Meowser. <laughs> What's it mean? So they explained the power up, you know, Peach. Mario, you know, I think Toad. I, I don't remember for sure. Uh, and, you know, he's going to have a cat tail and he's going to have claw ear claws and he's going to have kitty ears and whiskers. And I was like, cool. What do you want him to sound like? <laughs> the director looked at me right through the glass, clicks the talk back button and goes, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, went, I was all like, oh, now I got to do some of that voice actor stuff, you know? So uh, I went, I actually looked right at him and said, hey, just give me a minute to think about it, you know? Mm -hmm. They were like, that's cool. And they can still hear me. And I'm in there screwing around and I'm all going, can't go. That's not going to work. This guy doesn't go, you know? So I thought a bigger, a bigger cat. Um, so I thought, what about bobcat sized kind of a rat? And uh, it went from there. I was like, all right, we're not going to layer this. A lot of people thought I layered it uh, where I was going. Rah! And then we go back and go Rah! with it. No, it went all like at the same time where it was like, Rah! and i did that for like two hours and i could taste blood i stripped my throat it didn't tear my vocal cords up now all you interweb people out there no i did not lose my voice during that session um the i've seen things on the interwebs where it's, Kenny James lost his voice while recording, you know, Meowser or whatever. No, never lost my voice. And in fact, about, let's see, I think that was on a Tuesday. I had three days to recover and I was on stage in a, a musical. I was in Evita and I was singing. So I didn't lose my voice. Ding. <laughs> So, 
I don't even know how that story came to be just now. It's just, yeah, I told you guys, you don't even have to ask me questions. I'll, I'll just talk about myself for days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a self-proclaimed, well, somebody else told me once that I was a narcissist and I'm like, yeah, I guess I am. Eh. <laughs> I'm not the worst narcissist in the world, but, you know. Definitely. So how does it feel that, you know, the legacy of the franchise still kind of lives on to this day, even now what what you mentioned earlier, like with a, you know, now having a movie with their their over billion dollar movie. Oh my God. Um, I think the, I think that the, um, the budget on that movie was only a hundred million dollars, something like that. And they've made way over a billion dollars on it. And that's before, oh, yes. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. before it comes out on Blu-rays and everything. So, yeah. uh, but as far as the game franchise goes, uh, it's, it, it took a, it took a while for it to set in, you know, I, like I said, I kept working. Uh, I think I started recording late 2004 Hmm. because, well, it might've been early 2005 because if I remember right, Strikers came out, it was released in November of 2005. So I may have recorded that earlier on in 2005. I've lost track. Um, But for, from 2000 four or five, whichever it was, until 2016, December of 2016, I was still working my regular job. A lot of, nobody knew that I was this game voice, Uh, except every once in a while, sometimes I'd be laying on somebody's living room floor with my head halfway in their gas fireplace, repairing it, you know, and I would look over and go, oh, you guys have a Wii? That's cool. You know, I'm the voice of Bowser. And they'd be all like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'd go, I'm not kidding. You know, I'm, I am, you know, and every once in a right. while, I have me sign the jewel case or something, you know, and my kids are going to freak out. Now, I mean, things have changed a lot since uh, I started doing um, conventions in about, must have been about five years ago 2018 i think is when i started doing cons and Mm. now uh, well not very long ago if you googled kenny james what you would get is tom kenny who's spongebob and half of the pictures would be him and half of them would be me and i'm (laughs) like wait but now if you Google Kenny James, I'm the first Kenny James that pops up. So made some advances. My appearance, <laughs> my appearance agent says that he did that. And I go, how how could you do that? And he goes, well, you know, I, I did some stuff, you know. Yeah. Oh, you told Google to put me first? Come on. <laughs> google does what google does because google will be skynet i'm convinced of that google will become skynet <laughs> but anyway yeah it's um as far as the how does it feel to be this you know this icon and all that stuff it's amazing but i didn't oh, yeah. know that until about five years ago when i started meeting fans You know, and then I was all like, Mm -hmm. constantly, all day long, I get, you're the voice of my childhood. You know, you've meant so much to me. And I love Bowser. I never play any character but Bowser in, you know, any cart game and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, awesome. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and and now I'm doing anime too. So, you know, it's it's all working out. Oh, my eye is so itchy. This... North Texas is the worst for allergies, I swear. Mm. It's all year long here. It's not just spring and summer. And it's like even in the winter time, I die. <sighs> That's what I get for moving closer to anime studios. Mm. <laughs> Hi, Crunchy. How's it going? 
<laughs> you know, right? Well, I'm wearing my I'm wearing my scout wings, you know. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. Attack on Titan. Oh nice. Mm-hmm. That was I was King Fritz. Uh, oh wow. Oh nice. Episode awesome. 80. I nice. know this one this one's autographed because I was using a new I was using a new silver marker. I wanted to see how it worked. So hmm. <laughs> nice. It's just nice. Sitting. Forty dollars pissed away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so moving on from voicing Bowser, you also do voiceover for a lot of different commercials. Can you talk about some of your commercial work? No, I don't really do a lot of commercials, but um, I've done a I've done a bunch of commercials for. Um, I don't know. It's a car dealership, and I I feel bad because I can never remember what it's called. But I, it's over in the East Coast somewhere, and I'm not even sure what state it's in now. But I don't know. It's just this this character called Nash, and these characters they they sound like South Park characters, but they don't really look like South Park characters. And I'm I'm the one that gets to drop the f bombs and. S bombs and all that stuff. So whenever I record those, I just let it fly and just let them beep them out. I don't just, you know, go, oh, that's a bunch of. No, I actually go, that's a bunch of shit. And, you know, because that way it sounds natural, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I have been known to interrupt people's Spotify playlist to tell them about post it notes. <laughs> You know, use use number twenty three for you know post it notes. You know, so things like that. Um, I don't know. I've 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 done some really fast commercials for. I think it was another car dealership where they wanted eight thousand words in thirty seconds, and I was able to pull that off with some clever editing on my part because um, I use uh, Adobe Audition, and um, I'm pretty good at. I mean, you can even take just sibilance from where I just said sibilance, and you can you can cut that s down to where you don't even notice that it's been cut down, but you just gained two tenths of a second, you know, and that can mean a lot in a thirty second commercial that has a huge amount of words in it. But anywho, so yeah, I mean, I I do commercials whenever you know somebody wants. They don't doesn't pay good or anything i'm not union you know i don't have an agent for commercial stuff if it if they approach me and then you know i go yeah i'll do it nobody knows who i am you know doesn't matter you know i'm freaking bowser so who cares <laughs> <laughs> and i'm fritz and i'm miyagi <laughs> anybody ever heard of one piece a little bit yeah Oh wow! Oh, oh yeah. that's cool. That's what I was just recording yesterday. So wow, wow. awesome! No, Yagi's still going. Yeah, he's my he's my most known, I think, most known anime character so far because it's there's been a whole bunch of episodes where he's appeared and he oh he's he's really great. You know, I try to goad it up every once in a while because he is a goat. And he is a doctor, Dr. Miyagi. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they'll be all like, uh, here's this line and do, 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 do. And I'll be all like, oh, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> I like to goad it up, man. It's like uh, not too much, but just enough to where it makes you remember that, oh, yeah, he's a goat. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun. But anyway. What else? So, speaking of the animes, you've also done a bunch of other animes, including what you just mentioned. Yeah, what's, yeah. It, what's, what's it like working on these animes? Man, oh man. Um, I love it so much. I was just telling a director and engineer yesterday, I came out of the booth and I was like, God, I love this so much. You know, because it's so much fun. Um. I have begun describing working in anime when I do panels and things like that uh, 
first of all, I used to tell people, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm doing anime now, you know, and the, 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 the panel audience goes like, Ooh, and I'm like, yeah, you probably know my most, uh, most famous character. Ooh, they perk up and you go, yeah, it's additional voices. Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> additional voices because that's what i was getting most of the time right you know you're just additional voices if you even get a credit you know sometimes right. it's just what we call walla which is background stuff where you've got a bunch of people going you know like on south park going rabble 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 um but um the parts started coming along and then i started describing it as the forest gump box of chocolates of voice acting because you never know what you're gonna get right um, right <laughs> mm -hmm. once, and i'm dead serious man i'll get an email from crunchy and it'd be like are you available well with this with yesterday's session it was like are you available tomorrow at this time and i was like oh i would like it to be a little bit earlier so they were able to shift me a little half an hour earlier which helped um but they'll just be like, are you available this date, this time, for this show, for this director? And I'm like, sometimes never even heard of the show. So you walk in there and you're like, hey, how's it going? And they're like, they put you in the booth and the engineer gets the mic where he wants it. And you go, all right. And then they tell you what you're going to do. <laughs> I don't know ahead of time. You know, so unless, except lately, it's like, usually it's Miyagi because he's been... He's been uh, prominent again. Yay for Miyagi. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, it's um, it's an absolute freaking hoot. And it's the whole reason why I relocated. I, I came home from a convention one time uh, after meeting uh, a bunch of, at the time, Funimation biggies, you know, Monica Rial and and uh, uh, Chris Sabat, you know all these Dragon Ball people, and then uh, My Hero Academia people, all these like big shows, you know. And I was like, wow, I should move to Dallas and do you know an uh, anime. And they were like, yeah, you should. You know, of course you're gonna go, yeah, sure you should. And I was like, I'm gonna. And they go, you should. I will. Well, you should. I went home one time after one of these shows and said to my wife, I was like, what do you think about selling the house and moving to Dallas? <laughs> she was all like, okay. <laughs> I mean, she had barely ever been out of the state she was born in. I, you know, I mean, sometimes she'd barely even been out of the county. So she was all like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> so we... Fixed the house up, got it painted, sold it over one weekend. As soon as we put it on the market, it sold. So we moved to Dallas and been here for three and a half years now. And I've been working at Crunchy off and on almost that whole time. So nice. th thanks to Monica, because Monica Real, she was um, instrumental. You know, I told her, I said, I'm in town now. And she's like, you have demos, right? And I go, I got old demos. They're crusty. They're not great. She was like, well, send me whatever you got and I'll, I'll send them in, into Crunchyroll or at uh, Funimation at the time. And uh, she did. And next thing I know, I wind up getting a call going, hey, we'd like to have you come in. It was like nine o'clock at night. They had me coming in for a session and I was terrified. So... <laughs> <laughs> because it's because it's ADR. ADR is a different mm -hmm. animal than working. Yeah, from, you know, uh, working from a script where the animation's not done. You know, but this is the the Japanese animation. The, that whole thing's already been done. It's been acted. It's been animated. It's done. We have to go in. They work from these guys. There are so many people who work on anime dubs um it's a huge operation you wouldn't believe it um that you know i mean they have they get a translation from japan but when you translate japanese to english it doesn't sound very western 
You know, I mean, it just doesn't. It doesn't translate well. So then you have adaptive script writers. They take that and and they're actually, I've seen them do it at like airports where friends of mine who are writers are sitting at the airport waiting for their flight. They've got headphones on with their laptop and they're going almost frame by frame looking at flaps and the adaptive script and changing things and try to, to get it to fit better. And you're still, even in while you're recording it in the studio, we edit things on the fly because it's just like, that's just not going to work. So let's take this word out or let's use this word instead. That'll shorten it or, you know, so that you don't have to go <laughs> trying to get all the words out, right? Because <laughs> then the flaps really don't look natural. So, you know, beginning flap, end flap. Sometimes the internals aren't quite as important unless there's a pause. You know, you go, blah, 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 blah. Well, then you have to hit those. You can't just talk through them. So it's challenging. And I love every bloody second of it. Every second. All of it. Oh, yeah, because, you know, you know that way we, we just told us about, you know, you give up the challenge, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I, sometimes do I regret that I live in North Texas? Yeah, sometimes. You know, I mean, I grew up in Texas, but Washington State, because I lived there for almost 40 years, it feels more like home to me than Texas does. Sorry, Texas. But, you know, I spent 18 years in, well, yeah, almost 18 years in Texas and then almost 40 years in Washington. So kind of a, the scales are kind of, woo. yeah. Anyway, I bet you got more questions. I have, I'm not even letting you guys talk. <laughs> No, uh, it's fine. No worries no, at all. No, no worries. No worries. No, it's then that's just the way I am. Ah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, so you've also done acting and singing in live theater. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, man. Um, like I said earlier, uh, I I started acting when I was about forty. Um, I had been performing on stage as a singer you know for a pretty good period before that actually i have a 12 song souvenir we were so close when i was in bands i was in this original band and we were so close to making it um we had a producer he owned his own studio he but he was kind of a flake and he wound up flaking on us and the recording never got completely finished. Uh, he was actually, while we were beginning to mix it before mastering, just mixing it down, he was all like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna take this to LA. He goes, I know some people, I'm gonna shop it around. He goes, I'm gonna try to get you guys a, a showcase at the Troubadour. You know, and we were just all like, oh my God, this is it, because this. A lot of this material was good. And we were like, all right. And then he wound up, uh, his wife divorced him. He sold the studio. He disappeared. <laughs> um, the guy was severely ADD. Uh, he used to come in with um, patch cables, quarter inch ca patch cables around his neck. Uh, and he would be plugging and chucking cables on the board. And then he would just go, all right, I'm going to go ride my quad. Out the door he goes. And we're like, I guess we're recording ourselves. So <laughs> we didn't have an engineer. He was like, you guys know how to do this, right? You know, you push record. And if you don't like it, you rewind and you push record again. <laughs> so anyway. Um, so the acting. That was my chair. <laughs> the uh, the acting thing all started pretty much at the same time. Uh, with theater, I had gone to a production of 
Fiddler on the Roof at, I think it was at the Paramount Theater in Seattle. You know, so, I mean, this was a professional touring company, big time thing. And I was all like, I got out of that and I was like, wow, I could do that. And then I didn't think anything of it for another couple of years. And then I went and saw a community theater production of Fiddler on the Roof. Very small theater, tiny. And it was still really good. And I was like, I could do that. So eventually I talked myself into auditioning and then didn't want to go because I was a scared. And and my girlfriend at the time, who is my wife now, she was all like, no, you're going. And I was like, no, I'm not going. Yeah, you're going. I'll go with you. And I go, you got the kids here. And you know, she had two kids. My my son was living with his mom at the time. But so she was like, I'll take the kids. <laughs> I'm like, oh, crap. I guess I'm going. <laughs> So I go in there and I auditioned and I did really good. And uh, that was for Man of La Mancha. And I wound up not being muleteer number three or something, you know, like that. I I was the Duke, Dr. Carrasco, Man of the Knight of the Mirrors, uh, which is all the same guy. But in the play, they're separated you'd have to know man of la mancha um so it was a good part i mean like really good part and so from then on i was like all right now i'm definitely into this um the next thing i auditioned for was uh carousel and i did my audition they ran me through some scales um you know for vocal range and I went to go home and the director, one of, well, the music director was the guy who played Cervantes in Man of La Mancha. But yeah, he goes, uh, him and the other music guy, they were going to do a, a dual piano arrangement of carousel instead of a small orchestra kind of a thing, just dual pianos. And it worked out pretty good. Um, but he goes, we just want to, want to save a phone call. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, we want you to be Billy. And I was like, no. <laughs> and they were like, what do you mean? No. And I go, dude, this is my second stage musical ever. I go, no, I'm not ready for this. Well, we think you are. And I went, I don't No, I don't think so. And they went, well, we would really like you to do it. And I went, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it. They only had to twist my arm halfway, you know, mm. but they did have to twist a little bit to the point where at the time I was uh, an ex smoker and they, they were like, we're going outside. And I was like, can I have a cigarette? I thought you didn't smoke. I don't give me. Gimme, 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 gimme. I was scared to death. Um, but that show, probably of all of the stage productions I've been in, I probably knew that show the best. Mm. Um, I memorized it so well that my wife would drill me after I got home from work. I She would just take the script and just randomly flip through the script and then just go, and she would feed me a cue line. Didn't matter where it was in the script. Didn't have to be in order. Backwards, forwards. Feed me a cue line. I knew what my response was. Every oh. time. I only messed up on stage once. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, uh, myself and uh, an actress that was, uh, she was the owner of the carnival where the carousel would have been. Um, we had this conversation and at one point both of us just looked at each other like you know just waiting for somebody yeah. to say something <laughs> i couldn't remember 
if it was my line, I couldn't remember if it was her line. She was doing the same thing. You know, I don't remember. It, it probably didn't last nearly as long as we thought it did. Mm -hmm. But because it's so horrifying when you can't remember your line. I, especially when you know it's your line and you're just, you're trying to stay yeah. in character. You're trying not to look horrified. And you're just, your brain is just going, oh my God, I don't know. I don't have any freaking idea. Holy crap, what am I supposed to say? And then sometimes it just snaps back in, or you just say something that's close just to try to get it going again. I did that with, uh, <laughs> I did that with Man of La Mancha one time. I forgot my lines. I was down center too. Ugh, that was awful. Um, and uh, I was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I was R.P. McMurphy. And I was arguing. And I forgot what I was supposed to say. So I just faked my way through it. Oh. Oh, it's terrifying. All terrifying. Like, but man, I miss theater so much. I haven't done, I haven't been in a theater production since right before I moved to Texas. So the last thing I did, I was in a production of um, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh, nice. Hmm. I I played uh, Saint Aphrodisius. He's a he's a a, a statue, but mm, yeah. the statue is miss. You know, he's holding his head because Saint Aphrodisius was a, a real. That it really happened. He was beheaded. Um, and so I built my. You know those. Have you ever seen those guys on on the YouTubes and stuff? What, uh, they they have that trick thing where it's like looks like their head falls off and they catch it and then can push it back up it's like their head drops yeah. way down what it is is you're raising the shoulders of the outfit at the same time you're scrunching your head down and it's weird so i built this rig out of aluminum rods and a coat hanger and so i started with my head basically off you know, I'm holding it. And then when I start singing the song, I pushed my head back up. I had to walk downstairs and I'm walking around Quasimodo. I just sort of sneezed and my head fell off <laughs> and I pushed it back up. The audience was like, Whoa! <laughs> it was great. But um, because I do conventions, mm -hmm. uh, conventions are on the weekends. So it's hard, you know, theater, when are the performances on the weekends? Mm. So I haven't I haven't been able to do any theater since I started a, having a pretty steady convention schedule. So I still, for the rest of this year, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have like eight shows still scheduled this year. So wow. Wow. actually next weekend, I'll be at Fan Expo Dallas. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, you mentioned that to me. Yeah, yeah it's convenient. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know what's crazy? I'm going to stay in a hotel because oh wow, I live in Denton. To go to downtown Dallas, besides the drivers and the traffic here are absolutely berserk. Mm. Um, it would probably take me an hour maybe even a little more to get there every day and then drive home. I was all like, no, my, my contract says that I have hotels for these shows. So they got me a hotel. So I'm just going to drive over, stay the weekend and then drive home. So there you go. Yeah. Anyway, was that answer Ooh. long enough for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got a million stories. I'll tell you. Uh, no. Oh, we haven't is. even we haven't even gone into my submarine duty so <laughs> <laughs> so what would you like to say to those who have uh, supported the projects you've worked on over the years hmm. man i appreciate everybody so much um like i said i started doing conventions five years ago or so and and after 
beginning that process of meeting all these fans um and i mean by now it's thousands already and i really didn't know how much of an impact this franchise had on people until i got out there and so i appreciate it there and you know what people that are almost my age it can be even my age uh they they've introduced it to their kids and then their grandchildren are playing these games i mean i get people to bring their three-year-olds up to my table and go yeah she's already playing mario games and stuff and i'm like wow so the franchise is definitely not gonna die i think that it'll go on probably in way after I'm gone. And that's kind of, it's almost comforting. One time I said to my wife here, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, uh, I said, you know, I've done a lot of cool stuff. I go, I was on submarines. Uh, I go, I've been in bands, you know, with hair down to the waistband of my Levi's, you know, and I go, I've done lots of theater that was so much fun. I go, I've been a voice actor guy now. I'm a I'm an iconic character from a major franchise. I go, a hundred years from now, you can Google Bowser and my face is gonna pop up. I w how cool is that? I have this legacy. I'm not rich. I drive I drive a 2013 Kia Soul. You know, <laughs> <laughs> even though I I dearly love my car. It's the coolest looking soul in town, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um the original body style is way better than the new ones. Hands down. And it's a uh, it's a plus model, so it's got the uh, 2 liter and uh leather, you know, trim inside. And, <laughs> aftermarket rims short tires yeah rides like crap because of the short tires but i don't care it looks good yeah <laughs> i used to call her max because you did black on black on black you know my windows are really dark it's black paint and the wheels are black so i was all like it's like mad max's car it's it's the black on black yeah, the interceptor. Yep. <laughs> yeah. She can't quite so, go that fast, but <laughs> no. You know, not... speaking of interceptors, though, I saw a video yesterday or the day before of a police interceptor, Tesla police interceptor. And this guy in a Mustang GT was running from them on the freeway. And this guy would get caught up in traffic. And once he got around traffic, this Mustang, you couldn't even hardly see him on the dash cam anymore. He was so far ahead. And this guy would just go and just reel him in in just a few seconds. I was like, holy hell. You know, I mean, like a Tesla 3, those things can go like 150 something miles an hour. So, woohoo. Anyway, next. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it can go quite fast. So if people would like to connect with you, where can people find you? Oh, man, mostly on the Instagrams. Uh, Kenny James Bowser. Uh, I'm still behind Samantha Kelly uh, in followers. You would think we would have a million followers, but we don't. I think I'm just over 4,000, like 4,100, something like that. But she's up at like 48. Oh, wow. She's like at 4,800 or something, you know? And I'm like, God dang it. She started Instagram after I did. <laughs> the problem with me is that I'm a lazy social media guy. My agent's all the time going, you need to post stuff. You need to be active on social media. I'm like, about what? What am I yeah, going exactly. to What do you post? Am I going to take pictures of my food? <laughs> oh god i can't stand oh, those oh, oh my gosh oh i can't stand those people no i'm definitely uh. not a food porn guy and it's not no, right, yeah 
No. You know, or, you know, hey, uh, look at me. I'm at Walmart. What? Who cares? <laughs> so, like, everyone goes to Walmart. Like, yeah, every, yeah. everybody goes to Walmart. No, I mean, granted, I will say that I should post more things about upcoming shows. Um, usually I don't post anything about a show until like a week before it happens. Mm -hmm. Um, I should post more things from shows. You know, I could be taking pictures of cosplay and, you know, Ooh, look at me. I'm at, you know, Fan Expo Dallas. But I don't because I'm lazy. I just don't. I'm all like, ah, oh, wait, what? And then I put my phone down and I forget about it. I don't care. Social media is not my forte, you know. I wish I had a manager that would just do it for me, but that would require paying somebody. So, yeah, yeah. Those anyway, are yeah be um, mostly uh, the Instagrams, uh, Facebook and Instagram are almost one and the same now. So, yeah, uh, all owned by f same people. So, yeah. uh, Twitter. I, I ignore Twitter. Yeah, don't we all? <laughs> yeah. Don't we yeah. all? And I mean, all. on that one, it, it's Kenny James Bowser, but without the E in Bowser because they don't give you enough characters. So Kenny uh, James Bowser I had to go B O W S R. <laughs> anyway, mm. so mostly Instagrams. People are, I, I get, notifications from instagram all the time where people are like so and so wants to send you a message i'm like i don't know these people <laughs> <laughs> i can't say hi to everybody you know right yeah so uh, anyway so, go right. Ahead. what's that oh, i was just gonna say so the last question that i'm going to ask is the question that we ask <laughs> our oh, guests okay. at the end and so <laughs> of course this podcast is called jake's happy nostalgia show um, when you think of nostalgia, what do you think of, or in your own words, how would you kind of define the word nostalgia? Oh, man. For me, well, I mean, nostalgia as a definition is obvious, but when I look back at things that are nostalgic, uh, it was hanging out with friends at Lake Sam Rayburn when I was a kid, uh, a huge lake summertime camping out there with the friends family down the road going out on the boat getting torrential downpours where there's a river running through your tent um i look back at all that stuff very fondly that's nostalgic to me um the 70s in general uh and even the late 60s um that's all Classic rock. I mean, <laughs> people are like, oh, what do you listen to? I'm, like, I'm a classic rock guy, um, big time. Uh, I went had a country phase for a while, but that didn't last very long. So <laughs> back to classic <laughs> rock. But just the nostalgia, the memories of things you did with people that you either loved or loved hanging out with, you know. Yeah. Um, all of the time that I spent with my first wife, we were high school sweethearts. Uh, that was amazing. Um, and that was all back. That was all back in the late 70s. Uh, right up until 81, you know, when I graduated high school. And then we were married. And we did about eight years while I was in the Navy. And then it fell apart. But anyway, still very nostalgic. So, yeah, other than the actual definition, that's what I look back at. I mean, I look back way further than when I started acting and doing this kind of thing. Because this has only been 18 years of Bowser, 18 or 19. And I look back way further than that for nostalgia purposes. So. Well, that's some great words to end on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, really end up and your, your Instagram and everything will be in the description down below so people can follow you or connect. 
Yeah. Well, well, again, Kenny, thank you so much for doing this. This was a blast. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you so yeah. much. Absolutely. And I'll, and I'll email you when this goes up. Okay. Awesome. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, Kenny. Cheers. Cheers to you. We wish your, wish your weekend, so. Yes. And thank you again. Every day is a weekend for me, pretty much. So. <laughs> 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 don't Definitely. be jelly don't be jelly <laughs> yes and uh, goodbye to our goodbye like, to I our said, like i said i'm still poor so <laughs> i just don't have to work <laughs> yes and goodbye to all of our watchers and listeners as well we absolutely enjoyed our time with kenny james and as always what do we say yes, Jake? Thank you. keep nostalgia alive and the next time more episodes coming away thank you so much kenny it's been a blast and uh stay tuned for, for amazing more episodes See you next time. Take care, everyone. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.